this. Well, have you ever asked yourself, do you want to, do you want to like contribute? Do you want change in the world? Or that, hey, I have lots, I have lots. There's lots and lots. There's always opportunity. It's always this belief. I noticed that I was like, oh, wait a second. What is going on? Why am I not getting results? You know, oh, you should know everything. You should know this. So if you are a math teacher, you should be able to teach music. Is it? The knowledge is just, just like superficial. It's just like, and that ego that is always wanting to be perfect, always wanting to be right, always wanting, oh, it's about me, me, me. Like I always started to victimize myself. I said, oh, poor me, all that stuff. And I got tired of it. I hated all that stuff. I really like pointed my fingers and I said, I hate you. Instead of like blaming, I started to go more inwards and say, well, what do I have? It's... It's a work in progress, but that's what life is. If it was always like stagnant, then what is the purpose? Like having fun, like laughing at yourself, laughing with the situation and just really enjoying it. It's not about the ego. So the process is that when I did my teaching before I remember um, just doing the grammar stuff. I would actually not even do grammar. It was like, it, it was implicit grammar. I would still do the lessons. I have like these lessons planned out. I have a lesson plan and I had my learning objectives and I had this and all that stuff. And then I started to notice that people were just like, I sense this boredom in people. I sense this sort of dissatisfaction with people. I sense this sort of lack of connection. And so I asked myself, what? What am I doing wrong? It was like a process. Again, it was gradual. There were things that would just come. It was like timing, right? It was just like, okay, well, okay. So, you know, it's it's life is that life is the same thing, right? So um, I started to question, like, I started to question and then understand the difference between language versus communication. I actually started learning this like a few years ago <laughs> and really started to go, oh, wait a second. It is about communication, but which is intuition and body language so really it starts there i started to notice that it was like many of us because of the way the systems are because of the way we were taught that is like you have to know the information before you apply it's kind of like studying for your driver's uh, permit or license um, and you had to know the information before you actually did it but what we forget is that we actually learn or rather acquire by doing and we're not talking about practice. We're talk practice usually implies that you have knowledge first and then you practice it. But what happens is we get scared, or at least we're conditioned to get scared of being in that moment, being in the thick of it, because we're like, we don't have the experience. Uh, this is why we say we have this sort of I've heard this many times, the imposter syndrome. I don't have the experience. I don't well, that's how you get dirty. You get down and dirty, you get right into it. But Allowing yourself to experience it little by little. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just be like, okay, one thing I learned today, okay, and that's it. You just learn how to do one thing and that's it. You didn't, you don't, if you want to do two, fine. If it's exciting, great. You know, so context before content. It's always that through stories, right? We love, the reason why we love stories, we're gravitated towards movies and TV shows and what have you because of the stories and we want those stories for ourselves but there's that innate desire to be in part of it right that's why we're like oh we're connected to like a story that actually is a story oh something we can relate to that's is all about the whole thing it's all about connecting 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 intuition communication connecting the reason i mentioned the whole beginning with mindset stuff is because when we work on our intuition we work on instinct and enjoyment uh, adventures, that childlikeness, all that stuff, and that development inside and out, we start to realize that, oh, wait a second, that's why we're using this. That's why we're doing something like this where I listed down these things where uh, we start with pictures, images. Okay, so we start with pictures, images, um, guiding with the, guide the eyes, or rather the five senses. Usually it starts with the eyes. We start to understand this thing with our five senses because they are connected to the body so the five senses are actually innate. It's like part, it's, I feel like for me, my experience is that when I started becoming more like, go, when I started to acquire languages, it was just like, oh, okay, so that makes sense. Okay, right. It's easy to get the information, like, oh, that's what it means. And you get the translation. And then what happens? It just goes away, right? The reason I say the eyes first is because 
if you look at caveman before, or even maybe even way before that, how do animals communicate? Is it really through the words and sounds they make? No, it's communication through the body, right? What is it? Eighty percent or something like that of of communication is body language, right? So five senses are innate. That's all that stuff. But usually it starts with the eyes. Um, you can use many things. Of course, you know you have the internet for internet pictures, photos, images whiteboard you can buy one of these like small ones if you have like a small or a bigger whiteboard use that piece of paper anything smart boards if you have like one of those that's rare that's usually for teachers <laughs> whatever tools you have no limits you can use puppets or dolls like this one i have this one sometimes i use this it's um i call him roddy <laughs> right i use it that's okay and it's not just for kids this is not just for kids this is for being acquisition. I mean, even if it's for kids, go ahead, go with that. This is, be childlike, right? So enjoy the process. Uh, TPR stands for total physical response. I've seen this many times on the internet where people use TPR and they just use pictures, but they still translating. The purpose of TPR is to ignite some sort of connection with the senses because the senses, again, going back, is connected directly to the subconscious area of the brain back here, where it is so old that it's like, it's just automatic. So what does automatic mean? Fluency. And what does that also include? You get accuracy. The other stuff is, of course, sounds. I would say after the eyes, or not even so much with the eyes and the body, um, when we feel something, we actually find that we're more connected. Of course, people refer to sometimes, I've heard this before, the multiple intelligences, ooh, all that stuff. I think those are just strengths. We all have intelligences. We all have all of it. But yeah, so going back to the eyes, and then the body, and then the sounds. But basically, yeah, the five senses. The eyes are the ones that I noticed for myself started, was more, it's just... You just know. When you know something, you know something. Um, okay, and then this one here is um, simple. So simple. Simple easy. I came up with this today. <laughs> I said simple easy. So what does that mean? Simple easy means like you want to make it as simple as and as easy for your students. Okay, simple easy means that you come with this sort of like, you make it easy for them. Have, how many times have we come across teachers who just babble? They just give information, all that stuff. It's not effective, right? So make it about them. Give it, give, giving this, right? So ask yourself, is this easy for you? You just want to teach the grammar and all that stuff. You just want to translate, do vocab, correcting and all that stuff, analyze, thinking, all that stuff. Or is it really about them? Because you already have your experience. So share that experience. I've had to change my teaching, as I mentioned earlier. I've had to change my teaching style and this was not only, yes, actually easy, but also it's rewarding because even though it feels like it's hard, it's not actually hard. All you got to do is trust that intuition. Ergo, why is it in the beginning? It's like mindset, mindset. Have that. You want to work on yourself. You can't pour, you can't pour water out of a water bottle if there's no water in it. So yeah, so just have fun. Next thing, concrete first, so and then abstract. So what do I mean, what do I mean by that? the five cents again so concrete is basically using the five cents same thing as i mentioned before focusing on concrete even under abstract concepts or it grounds the process so what i mean by for example if you say this is a cat you can show that this is a cat this is okay that's easy it's concrete understanding get it we get it okay but when you say stuff like my cat loves pizza or my dog loves pizza even the word love even when you go like this some people won't understand what that means. What is that? What is this? Right, so you have to use other things. So you go back to something like, how do you know if you love something? Where does that come from? Is it just loving it? Is it just like an action? It's abstract. Right? It's like you go by saying, well, you link it to something like the emotion itself. When you love something, you tend to smile. You tend to go like, oh, I love this. I like this. So you show pictures like smiley face good, bad, so, so, those kind of things. So emojis, pictures, facial features, those kind of things. You'll see it once you start working more on your intuition, all the process, and you have all this experience. You start to sort of sense and sort of intuitively know, 
if they actually are understanding what you're saying. So, um, so when you say, for example, love, I would just go back to it and say, so love, he loves this. This is really good. So kind of give context to that. You know, when you read a book, when you read a book and you say, um, I don't know that term, but then you look around the other words, the supporting or surrounding words, they're all like support. Oh, okay. I can sort of get the feeling. And then that's it. Keep going. Right. I forgot to mention here that when you're doing all this stuff, flow. Um, you notice that I put here work backwards. I wrote here work backwards. And what I mean by that is like always just going back to concrete. Go for simple easy, right? Going for images, five senses, right? And then support it, support it, support. Add support, add support, add support. But without over analyzing. So what I mean by that is just without getting them to focus on anything else but your story. It's the story. Right? Go with the story. This applies to both you as a teacher and also you as a person who, let's say, lang you love languages. If you love language, great. Go with the flow. Don't. If you miss a term, forget it. Keep moving. Because a river flows, it doesn't wait for you. But with flow, it's like the water cycle. It's like a water cycle. It comes back. So don't worry about it. Life is a story. Keep going. Keep going. You'll run across a concept anyway. A word or a concept, it'll, it'll come back. Assume nothing. Assume nothing means basically ask for understanding. Don't ask too much of it because it just gets them to overthink. Now the reason I'm saying all this is because you want it to also work with the subconscious. You want to work with the subconscious. The subconscious is where it is. It's all there. Okay, Automaticity, fluency, accuracy, memory, uh, feelings, understanding, interpretation, building constructs, understanding grammar, all that stuff. So you absorb everything rather than analyzing. That's the conscious right here. It doesn't work. Sometimes I still do like a give vocab <laughs> to people. I try to take them away from that. In teaching, we call this like when the students goes, they were off task. You want to kind of gradually bring them back to it without being like correcting them and saying, no, we can't do that. No, don't, don't resist it. Don't, if they're asking for a definition, fine, just give it to them. But bring them back to the flow of the river. They want to get off the river? Fine. Bring them back to the river. Flow with it. Swim the river. Enjoy. Life is all about having experience, exposure, and fun. And that's where we come into. All right? Have fun. Practice on people. Practice on people that you don't know. Uh, whether it's online, if you're like me, I like online stuff, that's totally fine. Practice on people. Use a language and then get them to like... See, you'll see that when you do this as not only as a practice, but like on yourself, but also on people. You start to feel what it's all about. Okay? So I, I emphasize here, have fun and then have fun yourself. So have fun with the people, have fun with the process, but also have fun with yourself. So anyways, the point I'm making with all this is that basically, yeah, you can be, you can guide people into communication without being a teacher. I hope that was really insightful. I hope that was very informative at the very least, <laughs> but also helpful. Write any comments of your experience down below. Uh, I'll, I think I will link some posts here, here, and there. Uh, here, 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 here. <laughs> Either one. Okay. And about building your intuition, all that stuff. And there are other videos to come with this one as well. Okay. I hope that helps. I will see you guys later. Bye.